the very test. My name is Jessica Lubianski. And today I am at the heart of our diocese, Assumption Seminary. I am joined by three of our seminarians here. So we're gonna let them introduce themselves and tell you where they are from. So we'll just start here to my right and then we'll go all the way down the table. Hello, my name is Dalton Moy. Uh, I'm, I'm originally here from San Antonio. I was raised in the parish of St. Jerome. Uh, and this is my, uh, my second semester here at, at Assumption Seminary. Hi, my name is Luisa La Cruz. Uh, I'm originally from San Antonio and my home parish is St. Leo the Great. And I am starting year two of Assumption here. Okay. Hello, my, nombre, my name is Guillermo Cruz. I am originally from Mexico and I come to the United States in 2014. And I applied for the Seminary of San Antonio and I have one year here. Awesome. Well, thank y'all for being here today and taking time. I know this is kind of a crazy week around here. There's a lot of things going on right now, exciting in the vocations office and within the archdiocese itself. So let's jump right in. And um, for whoever can maybe answer this question, what is like the daily life of a seminarian like? Uh, so the daily life here um, for me is uh, as a college student, it's pretty much like the regular life of a college student, except that you're not gonna be in a dorm, uh, like a regular university campus. You're gonna be here at the seminary and then going into classes. So that means uh, in, along with your homework, along with your meals, along with uh, your daily interactions that you have with your fellow people, you also have mass. You also have, um, you also have your liturgy of the hours, uh, and then you also have your advising meetings uh, with your formators uh, and spiritual direction. So it's a way for us to have that point uh, of education, but as well as focusing and making sure that we are staying conscious of the reason why we're here and the reason why we're studying. Awesome. Now, Guillermo, I know you, since you're from Mexico, mm -hmm. how is it being here and studying away from home? Uh, the first time is a little bit difficult, especially for me. I come here with any words in English. After starting my English program, I start to improve and I start to increase my English skills. But I, being in San Antonio and being a seminarian is a good experience because you can improve more your knowledge in English and also know the church here, know the church in San Antonio, know better the archdiocese. Yeah, that's a good experience. And then um, this one I'm going to ask to all of you, um, what really made you want to join the seminary and kind of take that next step of discernment? Maybe we'll start with Luis. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. So uh, I originally uh, was thinking about joining uh, the seminary and pursuing my vocation when I was about 19 or 20. Uh, after speaking with the vocations director, I decided to uh, continue college. Uh, and then so I was teaching for nine years. Uh, and so during that time, uh, I had been discerning uh, off and on. And I, I think whenever I received that question of like, well, why did you decide to do this or take this next step? The, the best way I can answer it is, is uh, like you're in a relationship. So there's like an initial attraction uh, and then sometimes you start dating. But at the end of the day, you're trying to pursue when you're dating someone, is this someone who you want to marry or not? And then if you do get married, there's a lot of reasons why you married that person. And so for me, the easiest way to answer the vocation uh, calling is with married people. And I usually just ask them, well, why did you marry your husband or wife? And a lot of the answers are just like, well, uh, I love the person that I'm around when, when I'm with them, who they bring, who I am when I'm with them is just a is just a better me. Uh, and I think for me, uh, for my vocation, it's it's that. Uh, who I'm becoming, who I am in my pursuit to the priesthood is is a better version of me. And, and so seeing that uh, throughout my life, realize, okay, this is something I need to pursue. Mm. Mm. For me, uh, I was a seminarian before in Mexico. And after when I quit the seminary, when I was 24, I decided to come to the United States to study English and being in college. I was in college and I enjoyed too much the uh, Newman Center or um, Focus Missionaries and all this ministry in the college. And I was in Omaha, Nebraska in the university. 
So I really enjoy these activities and I feel that God still called me through these all activities in the United States. So I decided to take a second chance in God and he bet, he try, he, God is looking for me in this path and as priest. So I enjoy the seminary for this reason. Yeah, that's great. And there are so many different resources. If you are currently in college, definitely get connected with that. Net Ministries, the Newman Connection, your campus minister, they can definitely point you in the right direction. So thank you for bringing um, that up because we have many multiple ways that we network within our colleges to bring awareness to vocations. Now I'll give you, Dalton, the chance to answer that same question. Uh, for me, I... Um... I had a lot of people telling me when I was younger, uh, growing up, I was an altar server. So um, I had a lot of people saying, oh, you should become a priest. And for years I had said, no, I, I don't want that. I wanted to be a father. I wanted to have a wife and kids. Um, but it wasn't until I was in my, right before my senior year of high school that I had, um, the thought had run through my mind uh, could I be maybe be called to this kind of life? So um, I kind of started thinking about it. And one of the main things that uh, kind of inspired me uh, was uh, the pastor that came to my parish, uh, my, my, my second year of high school, uh, the way that he, he ministered to the people and um, kind of showed just love and care for the entire community and made sure that everyone was reaching out. I found that inspiring. Uh, and I just wanted to see maybe that could be something possible for me. Yeah, and the qualities that make a great priest are the same qualities that make a great father or husband um, for our children in our parishes, for our families. And so it's great that you've solved those qualities and that you're now continuing to discern them and explore them. So what advice, and anyone can answer this question, what advice do you have if someone um, maybe young or old is discerning, maybe I wanna look at this seminary, where should they start? Uh, I would say to get in contact with the vocations director uh, and you can have like a come and see uh, experience. So you can stay here at the seminary for a week and to see a little bit more of what life is like. So you get some hands-on experience. And, and I think that's probably one of the things that I tried uh, that really opened up my viewpoint because before that I had really no experience of what seminary life is like or how the people are like. So I think there's this um, misconception once you join the seminary, everybody has their hands up here and they're praying constantly, but there's something very humane that's never lost. And that was one of my fears, like I'm gonna <laughs> lose my humanity if I join. Uh, but no, no, there's something uh, very much a part of you that stays with you and, and is, uh, fruitful for the whole community. So I think the best thing is just to come and see and, and talk to the vocations director so you can get an experience about being here a weekend or a couple of days. Uh, and you also have something called an Andrews dinner, correct? Mm -hmm. What is that? So an Andrews dinner is uh, an opportunity for anyone who is considering the priesthood and just ever give it a, a thought to come with their pastors and uh, just have a dialogue with the Archbishop and with the vocations director and the vocations team. Uh, we actually had one not too long ago and we've seen um, some of us were there talking to some of the guys and uh, just getting that opportunity to just kind of say like, hey, we're, we're human. Uh, this is a really good opportunity for us. And then kind of just have that dialogue like, um, what, what are your thoughts? What's your thought process? Uh, what, what made you kind of think about it? And then what are the qualities that you kind of find within yourself that kind of make that uh, that realization? Awesome. So there are so many different opportunities that this vocations office is doing right now to just promote vocations, to provide encounters and opportunities for those that are discerning to actually meet with seminarians, meet with priests, meet with sisters. And so if you are actively discerning, if you have any kind of inkling that you may be interested in joining this priesthood or some type of vocation, please reach out to the Archdiocesan 
vocation office um, so that they can get you plugged into these different activities. I want to thank Guillermo, Luis, and Dalton for taking a few minutes out of their day today just to talk a little bit about vocations with us. We will be praying for you and that is what I would challenge you with this week is to pray for vocations and to pray for these seminarians and their brothers that are studying here in the Archdiocese of San Antonio. They always need our prayers and I know that they are greatly appreciated. So please continue to pray for them. Thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you.